Yo. What's good? It is 5 a.m. on a Monday morning. I don't want to be up right now. I don't want to be up. I honestly don't even need to be up right now. And I'm sick. And I don't feel good. But I'm up. And I said it yesterday. You don't, you don't hear a single person complain about, oh, I didn't get enough sleep last year. I didn't get, I, I wish I would have got eight hours of sleep, nine hours of sleep last year, two years ago, five years ago. Nobody says that. Like nobody ever says, oh, I wish I would have got a lot of sleep a couple of years ago. That's, that's, you never hear that. You know what people do wish they would have done is I wish I would have started training for a marathon five years ago. I wish I would have started my business five years ago. I wish I would have, they, they say all the wants and dreams. I wish I would have traveled five years ago and seen the world. But nobody says, oh, I wish I would have got more sleep. The thing is, sleep is a short term satisfaction. And right now I wish I could go to sleep, but that's very short term. That is me right now. Me, three, like even two days, three days from now, I'm not gonna give a shit if I got, if I got now another two or three hours of sleep three days ago. It doesn't, like I don't give a shit about two days ago sleep. Like I don't even remember. And uh, the, the, the matter is like you sleep in, if you wake up, just, just go and do the thing because you just need to. It, it, I'm gonna read you guys like what, uh, I wrote these two things, these two pieces of paper. One is one thing is the things that I wanna be. One is the things that I don't wanna be. Like the worst life possible for me. I stay in the same place. I waste my time away with unfulfilling actions. I'm alone, I have no money. I work countless hours just to get by. I'm a failure. I'm proven wrong. I hate that one. I watch my family struggle and I work till their death and work till their death. Um, I stay average. <laughs> I, <laughs> I watch people do things that I want to do. That's a tough one. Um, and I regret, uh, I live regretting things that I didn't do. I, I wish I would have worked harder. Um, I wake up ha uh, hating my life. I wake up knowing I could have done more. I go through life not taking action, only taking the easy way out. That is what I could have done this morning by sleeping in. Is I could have taken the easy way out. The easy way out is staying in bed, all right? This is not the easy way out. I die thinking that I could have done things differently and better. That's what I don't want to do. Like, I read that, and that's motivating. You got, I think you guys should write down that too. Write down your ideal life. I won't read my ideal life just because, I mean, you guys probably know what my ideal life is. It's literally just the opposite of that. But, um, yeah, guys, it's a short, like, just think about it. Like, you're not going to give a fuck. If you're, if you're scrolling on your phone, this is how, well, this, you got to consciously do this. It's really hard to do. But you're scrolling on your phone. Whatever you're doing right now, think about it. Are you consciously like, well, you got to consciously think about it. Are you going to remember what you are doing right now? This thing. And you have to figure out, hey, I'm scrolling on my phone right now, watching these videos. There, maybe some of them are funny videos. Maybe some of them are, are motivational videos. But the thing is, are you going to remember any of those motivational videos? Even if you think they're good videos, any of the, the reels, the TikToks, the YouTube shorts, you're not going to remember a fucking one. Remember one right now. You probably can't. Remember the one you watched two days ago. Any one of that day. You can't. Think of it. You can't. You don't remember it. I don't remember any short I watched yesterday. And I watched a couple shorts. Um, over 10 shorts yesterday I watched. I didn't watch over 20. But I watched over 10. And I don't remember a single fucking one. So... It gets me. And you know what I do? I consciously think, hey, am I going to remember this thing? Even if it's like, uh, I did this from a young age. I did this in high school too. This is how I got on social media early. And it takes a long time to develop this skill, guys. So start now, right? Start now. You got to start early. It's better to start late than ever. But you got to consciously think, hey, I'm on my phone. 
I'm watching this video. Even think about this video. Are you going to remember this video? If you're not, you should probably go do something more beneficial that's going to benefit your life. All right. I'll just be honest and say that. Um, because like this channel is into, I mean, entertain, it's to motivate, it's to inspire. So if you guys remember anything, or if you think, Hey, I'm going to, am I going to remember this? You don't fucking need it. If it's something un, un beneficial to you is what I'm trying to say. So that is my morning rant and I hope it helps some people. Um, I'm going to hit these old bad boys. These old tree trunks. No, I don't have tree trunks, but I'm getting there. And uh, yeah, we're gonna do a lot of squats, a lot of reps, a, a lot, a lot of reps with low weight, Tom Platt style. So, <sighs> look at this. Boom, pitch black. And you know what? There's daylight savings, so I didn't even know this, but yeah, we gained, we gained um, an hour of sleep two nights ago or last night. But you know what? I still woke up at the same time because I woke up at 5:30 because I'm a beast, right? And uh, yeah, it doesn't matter. Am I gonna remember the sleep that I lost last night? No, I'm not. I don't give a shit about today. I did then, but now I don't give a shit. So think about it. All right, quick story before I get into this workout, but. Um, this is to tell you more about like the time thing because I think it's important. This is an analogy for you. Um, so I used to be in swimming like back in the day, back when I was in high school and I swam for like seven years, like oh, more than seven years. I swam a lot more than that. But swimming is fucking hard if you don't know, first of all. If you don't think so, that's fine, but go try it. And we had these coaches, these coaches were like probably the most impactful, influential people in my life that shaped me to be the person I am today. They kind of, this word has a bad rep on it, but groomed, go look up the definition of groomed, but they groomed me to be the person I am today. And that's one, a hard worker and like, a, like basically high willpower. Um, and I get stuff done. Like it's just work, work, work. That was their philosophy is like, just get the work done and work more. That's how you get better is you work a lot more um, and you work harder than other people, which was good. Um, but like, as I got older, I was like, ah, uh, like I, I kind of like clashed with their views on like, why do we need to be practicing three hours a fucking day? Like, I don't need that. Like I need to like be focusing like solely, like I do in, in weightlifting now, like high intensity, but lower amount of volume. Like that's, that's what I think was better. Um, and they used to do these morning practice where, where on competition days, think about this, on a competition day, you have to wake up for a practice. To get another practice and out practice the other team, we're gonna wake up at 6 a.m. and get in the pool, getting a freezing cold pool at 6 a.m. and go swim for uh, an hour practice and then go to school. And all the nights, like I remember just fucking regretting and hating like basically Every single day I'd like, I mean, I was up late. I was in high school. Like I'm a, I don't always go to bed early. And I know there was for sure some days there I didn't get uh, really any sleep. And then I had to go to this practice. Um, and it was hell, right? Like in the moment, like you're having to hop in a cold pool in the morning. You guys should try that. Go up, wake up at 6 a.m. and then go hop in a cold pool. It's the worst feeling ever. Um, but you know what I don't regret? Like, I don't, I don't remember any of the sleep I lost right now. Like, I don't remember any of the sleep I lost. You know what I do remember? I remember losing and getting second place at the state meet. Like, let me preface by saying, like, I don't give a shit anymore. Like, I, well, like, it's swimming. Like, I don't care. Like, obviously, there's full all of life. Like, it's minuscule and it doesn't matter. Um, but this is just, a, like, a story to explain to you guys. I wish and... I would have, like, I, I still have the feeling in my head that I wish I would have gotten first place. I wish I would have worked harder. I wish I would have done more to get first place. Even though it's really out of my control, that's things, those are things that I'm thinking about. Like, those are the long-term things, like things that I wish I would have done. Do I wish I would have gotten more sleep? 
no, I don't give a fuck right now. Like it, that feeling is gone off of me. I didn't get first place though. So that's like something that I wish I would have done. So I wish I would have done more work. I wish I would have done this stuff. So think about that. In the moment, you're, I, was, I didn't sacrifice the short term. I wish I would have, in the short term, I was thinking, oh, I, sh I wish I had more sleep. Um, and I didn't work as hard as a result of it. And there, I got second place. I will say, if you guys know me, I, I, every fucking sport I got, I got, I got hardest worker. So I was not like not working hard. Like if I was going to get do this stuff, I was working hard, but I'm just saying, I don't even, I honestly don't even know if there could have been, I could have worked any harder than I did. Um, I'm pretty sure I couldn't have worked any harder than I did, but I probably wouldn't have gotten like won it regardless, but it doesn't matter. I'm just saying. I don't care about the sleep. Like it's the same thing for anything. Like if you, anybody that got second place in the Olympics, they don't give a shit about all the sleep they lost going to the practices, the sleep sites, like the workouts that were insanely hard. They don't care. They don't have that feeling at all in them. They don't remember it. You know what they do remember? They remember standing in second place on the podium and they would think to themselves, what, well, damn, I wish I would have done another workout on the weekend. I wish I would have taken my sleep more serious uh, and, and uh, I guess that's um, <laughs> kind of counterintuitive. I wish I would have taken my nutrition and my health more serious and my stretching and doing all this stuff. They don't care about the sleep or they, they don't care about the short term and like the, not just the sleep, like the, the tiredness. I mean the tiredness when I say sleep, like it's good to get more sleep. I'm saying that, but. They don't remember the tiredness. They don't remember the, the pain and the suffering that they went through to get to the second place. But they do remember not getting first place and all the things that they probably could have done to get first place. So, I mean, at least that's for me. Like, I don't, <laughs> I, I necessarily don't care about swimming. Like, I don't swim anymore. But, um, yeah, it just, uh, it, it motivates me for other things because obviously I don't want to have that feeling again. Like I don't want to go through life, work my whole life for something and then get second place. Like that's pretty stupid in my opinion. Like you would, people don't regret the things that they, like they do. Um, they regret the things that they don't do um, a lot more. So I don't know, maybe that helps some people. It, uh, I think it was, a decent analogy, but I'm going to hit this workout and I'll catch you guys in the gym. Let's go. All right. First set. I'm going to do, I think 20. Just to really, you know, get really warm. Get my groove very deep. Very good form. No. I don't know if I pulled something. 
My knee really hurt that last one. Damn it. Should have warmed up more. Fuck. Ow. I don't think it'll be that bad. I'll just, it was right in here. Ah, oh, damn it. Okay. Well. I wanted to say. I might be canceling my Muay Thai membership. And that's for a couple reasons. Not because I don't want to do Muay Thai. I'm going to continue to do it. And I'm going to finish out this month. But I'm probably going to call them. And I don't know how long it is, but I'll cancel it soon. And I thought about it. It takes a good bit of time. And it's basically just a workout for me. Right? I'm not learning a whole ton because I'm not going to the, the sparring stuff as much because it's like super inconvenient. It's late at night. It's late at night. This camera doesn't follow me. It's late at night. And, you know, I got stuff to, like, I have to drive there. It's like a good 20 minute, 15, 20 minute drive. And then I also, I don't know, it just like makes my sleep worse. I'd rather do a run, honestly. Like I need to get back into running, use more utility because I'm going to Thailand and that's gonna be one of the things that I really only do. I'm just only focusing on fitness. I'm gonna be doing Muay Thai training. And it's like, okay, what's worth more of my time? Training at this gym where I'm not getting that much better or doing like a one-on-one -on -one training with people in Thailand who've been doing it their entire life, I'm probably gonna progress a lot quicker there. And it's gonna be more worth my time. Um, I can stack up more cash too. And then I'm just gonna be chilling because obviously my whole goal was to be able to quit my job and build something else and I have enough money to do that. Um, which realistically I could do that, but I, I just think about for how long I wanna be able to have, be set for at least two years just to be on the safe side. So that's about 50 grand I could do for two years if I'm living modestly and I don't live that modestly. I honestly live pretty lavishly if you're asking me, but um, yeah, that's what uh, I can I still get by on that. There's no way I'm gonna go two years without making money. Like, I feel like I, I'll not make money for like maybe a month and then I'm obviously making money a little bit from YouTube. But yeah, I might just stop the Muay Thai training, not quitting. When I go to Thailand, I'm gonna start training then. So I'm just taking two months off and then saving that, that time, that, I don't know, maybe like six, five, five hours a week. Now I can put those five hours a week into building another skill set, doing something else like reading. Um, I'm going to be doing more running. So running is a lot more t utility, in my opinion. Obviously, training Muay Thai is pretty utility. Like if I get in a fight or something. But yeah, that's... That's my thought process right now. Um, but yeah, it sucks because I love doing it, but um, I just got to like <laughs> do some other type of workout now, like go run. And this way, mainly I said this so I can take more better care of my body because it absolutely kills me every time I go to Muay Thai, Muay Thai, go to sparring. The next two days after sparring, bro. I can't even fucking move. Sometimes it's really, really bad. And I get injured too because people are, like, I mean, I've injured my knee, injured my hip. Uh, my shoulder gets pulled all the time. So I think taking that time and even just stretching for an hour, it's going to be exponentially better for my body because then I'm going to be able to hit better workouts, which is, 
I'm holding weightlifting and bodybuilding up here over Muay Thai. Like training Muay Thai, this is always weight. Weightlifting and fitness is always above. Muay Thai is part of fitness, but yeah. Let's see if my knee still hurts. That should be good. Get some blood in there. Second set. If you guys are wondering why I'm going light, let me a plate on. If you watch my last leg day, I had 275 on, I think for eight. And I honestly, I could do a lot more than that, to be honest. But it's this thing right here. Not my butt, my lower back. And it's from number one, sitting in a desk all day. Number two, doing heavy squats. They don't mix. I gotta stretch more. So I'd rather switch it up, a really heavy leg day, one day, and then the next week, high volume, light leg day. So I'm just gonna do a bunch of these fucking sets to burn the shit out of my quads. That's my goal. All right, I don't want this video to get too long, so I'm gonna film this set and then last set. I'm gonna do probably three more, <sighs> including this. I didn't really flex my lower back on that one. I'm getting a pump. You know, you think you add a bunch of good stuff to your life, but when you realize your life's gonna be the exact same if you delete it, if not better, and you actually do it and try it out, you can always go back to it, but I think waves are 
the best way to progress, right? You don't go in a straight line of progression. It goes like this. So no more whoop. You can't see it on my wrist. No more whoop. And I'm doing Muay Thai, but I'm just taking a pause with the training sessions in North Dakota. I think Thailand's gonna be a lot more progression training Muay Thai than people in North Dakota. Cause they'll get one-on-one -on -one coaching and it'll just be 10 times better. All right, I'm just doing some calf work. Quads are pretty burnt out. I wanna be able to walk around and stuff, so I'm not gonna go insanely crazy, but <sighs> forgot the lecture is today. It's the fourth, I'm pretty sure, if it's not tomorrow. But two things, because this morning, you know how I deleted all my social media, I deleted all the apps and stuff, but I still find myself, like even YouTube, I'll look up a browser. So I'm having to block the browser and that stuff. It's literally just my phone. I wanna do a video um, where I get a flip phone and I just try trying out a flip phone for a week where, and just putting my, my iPhone in a lock box or something just to experience it because it's like, it's been years since I haven't had my phone for that long. Like I used to get my phone taken away by my parents when I was younger for like months and I hated it, but it was actually really good for me because I'm not as attached to it as most people nowadays. I could honestly go without it, but I do work online. So it's really hard to go without a phone when you make money <laughs> online and you have to check all that stuff. But what gets me is the browser, the Safari. I'll just open up the Safari browser, look up YouTube, look up Instagram or whatever. And then I'm on a browser and it's doing the same thing. Instagram and Twitter, not really a problem. Um, I really don't go on it, but it's YouTube because I'll watch podcasts and I'll listen to music and stuff on YouTube. So. Don't ask me for my, my playlist while I work out. I don't have a playlist. I literally just listen to the same songs on repeat. Look up Kevin Larone. Please don't stop the music remix. That's what I listen to. And hard style. Just look up hard style workout playlist or whatever. I don't, I don't have a playlist. So um, what gets me is I go there and then I get stuck in the reels. Even me just now, I went into my settings and you can block certain websites with parental control. So I just basically blocked the YouTube website and I blocked Instagram and I blocked Twitter. So any way I try to go on those sites on my phone, I can't do it. There's no way I could go on those sites unless I have to go into my settings and go through the restrictions and, and delete the website, but I'm not gonna do that if I absolutely need to go on those sites. I'm just gonna go on my computer. And the only reason I need to is to check messages because some people reach out to me on DMs. If you guys actually wanna reach out to me, you can go. I gotta figure out something. Maybe I'll make an email WhatsApp or something or an email if people wanna reach out to me and stuff because I do have people reach out to me through social media and I don't check it. So I don't always reply right away. But if you guys do want to get in contact with me or ask me questions or whatever, I reply to messages on Instagram all the time. So um, I just check them every like couple days. So I'll go on my computer, but premise of it, I can't go on my phone anymore. I blocked all the websites. When I went to block the websites, I had to search up the URL, which is like the link to enter it in and then I got fucking stuck scrolling. I'm like, this is exactly why I need to delete this shit. It's because I got stuck scrolling. So it's addictive. If you don't get rid of it fully, that's the only thing you're gonna want. It's just, it's so stupid. It's fucking ruining society and ruining all these kids' brains, my brain included. Like I'm not saying myself, like I'm above it or anything or I have some crazy willpower, I don't. Like I get stuck on it just like everybody else. But I'm actually trying to put the action in to get rid of it. It's just fucking really, really hard. 
that's why I feel for a lot of people because they get trapped into it. They don't even realize. Like you don't even realize. Like even my dad used to get pissed at us for going on our phones and stuff when you're younger. My dad's stuck on TikTok now. It's sad. <laughs> I feel bad for him because he can't get off of it. Now he knows though. You guys as parents are stuck on that shit. It's mainly for old people, it's like, it's Facebook. But my dad doesn't go on Facebook. He likes to fucking, has, I don't know what he does on, on, <laughs> on TikTok. I don't live there, but my brother tells me that he's on TikTok, so. <sighs> I'm gonna call it right now, go back up there, cook some eggs, cook some steak. Show you guys, take my pants off for you guys. <sighs> Cause that's all you guys wanna see. You're sick. You're sick people. All right. I'm back. Good, good leg workout. I'm not even showing my legs, but this is important. And I wanna say this because I realized this recently, I'm trying to be prolific or bold because fortune doesn't favor the smart. Like I'm not the smartest, I'm not the most intelligent, I don't have a high education, none of that stuff. I'm learning a lot and I'm trying to be as intelligent and smart as possible, but I'm also trying to be bold. I'm trying to, fortune favors the brave, fortune favors the bold, whatever the saying is. Um, the most intelligent pr people aren't always the ones that like win in life. Like they, they're not always like the ones that succeed because you need a, a form, like a little bit of intelligence and a little bit of boldness. And that's what creates success. And this relates because recently, well, I'm gonna point out the elephant in the room and stuff. And, and I've been learning to like, the things that people don't wanna say, the things that like people think in their heads, but they don't always say because it might not be right. It might not be controversial. They don't think it's right. Like maybe it is right, and but it's not accepted by society, which for me, this is hanging out with friends, hanging out with my girlfriend, hanging out with my family is a distraction. Now, when I say this, if, they're wa if any of you guys are watching, I'm not saying you're a distraction. It's just a part of the point. Like it's, it's me saying, I'm getting distracted. You, my friends, my family, my girlfriend, my family, they don't have my goals and my aspirations in the forefront of their brain. They have their goals and their aspirations. Just like I don't have their goals and their aspirations in the forefront of my brain. I wanna do what I wanna do. They wanna do what they wanna do. Everybody wants to do what they themselves want to do. And so when I'm alone and dialed in, the only thing in my life is moving towards the goal that I wanted to move towards. And right now I'm dialed in. I don't have any distractions right now. But when my girlfriend comes and stays over or when I hang out with my brothers and we do something or my family or any like my friends, whatever, um, it throws me way off track. Like I don't even stick to the things I'm doing at all. Like it's insane. And I've realized this over the last year living by myself. Like when I, like when there's like an event or something or I go hang out with my friends or my family or my girlfriend, it completely throws me off track of the things that I want to do. Like, cause I just say yes, because I want to do it. I want to hang out with these people. I love these people. And so I want to do the thing. But it's, that's, this is why it's so hard to say no to a thing that you want to do and the self-control isn't there because I don't know if it's even self-control. It's like something I'm ha having to battle because it's, I don't know, maybe this is why I'm saying it's controversial to say this stuff because like obviously my family, my friends, my girlfriend are a distraction. They're not a distraction, but they throw me off course of things that, that like my goals and my aspirations of things that I want to do like on a day-to-day -day basis, like what I would have done if I wouldn't have, I guess, hung out or done something with them, if that makes sense. Now, don't, don't get it twisted that Tristan was like, doesn't like his family, doesn't like his friends, doesn't like his girlfriend. Like, obviously I love them to death. That's why it's so hard for me to say no to certain things. But I'm just saying, it's me realizing, and I'm gonna, it's not the last time I'm gonna get thrown off my track. Like I love getting thrown off my track by doing something spontaneous with like the people I love, like I do. But uh, it's just kind of like, I consciously think about it a lot because it's like, oh shit, I, should I say no to this? Like I wanna wake up at 6 a.m. Should I go hang out with my family and my siblings till whatever, late at night and go have dinner with them or go shooting 
at the range or something like that and stay up late. I like want to, like it would be fun to spend time with my family, but like I want to wake up at 5 a.m. tomorrow and go work out as well. Like that's, <laughs> it's like a hard thing because it's like one thing is a short-term satisfaction, like something you really want to do, something that obviously society is telling you to do. Go hang out with your family, go hang out with your friends, go hang out with uh, like the people you love. But the other thing is like, you could sacrifice that or you could move towards your goals, your aspirations, things you want to do big in life. And you get hated a little bit for that. Like a lot of people like uh, Alex Ramosi talks about his family hates him because he like doesn't go home for Christmas and holidays and stuff like that. Because like, I mean, honestly me, like it throws me so off track. Like I don't know if I will in the future because it throws me so off track, like weeks. Uh, if you like are traveling and stuff like that, like to dial back in, even from going to Miami, I'm just like, Oh, that was fun. But like, was it worth it? Like, did I get the, did I get closer to what I wanted to do? I spent a lot of money. I spent a lot of time, multiple days. And what did I get out of it? Did I get closer to my goals? Probably not. Like I had experiences and stuff. Um, and that's a good way to live. Most people are like, yeah, I want to experience and stuff like that. I do too. But it's a short-term satisfaction. The whole pro premise of this video is short-term satisfaction versus long-term satisfaction and learning to cope with either of them because to say no, I've learned, is the hardest thing you can do. So, yeah. Let me know what your guys' thoughts are on that. If you guys experience that where you have something you want to get done, but something comes into your life, whether it's just something external. It doesn't have to be like your friends or family. They want it, you like your friends want to go, oh, let's go hang out and do like drink or something like that. This is an example. I don't get asked to go drink. Like people know I don't want to go drink um, or go to parties or any of that stuff. But let's say you have to get like this work thing done or you want to make a YouTube video or you want to, you want to like go through your course that you just bought on copywriting or whatever. Or you want to go work out the next morning. And your friends ask you to go hang out. It's like, oh, you never come hang out. Come on. Like, it's just this one time. It's Halloween. It's Christmas. It's New Year's. Whatever. Just do it. And then you fucking do it. And then you fall into a trap. And the next day and the next day and the next day. Like, it just, it lowers your willpower. Because when you say something and you don't do it, it lowers your, your uh, kind of mental self uh Reliance, I don't know what's the word for it. Like when you say you're gonna do something and then you don't do it, you're lying to yourself. Like you're unconsciously lying to yourself. Like let's say, hey, I'm gonna finish this book by the end of the week and then I don't do it. I just lied to myself. Like I just like, so the next time I say I'm gonna do something, oh, I'm gonna wash the dishes and then I don't do it. Then I lied to myself again. And then it just keeps going and it gets bigger and it gets bigger. And then you become one of those people who say you're gonna do all these things, but you never fucking do them. I don't want to be one of those people. I have a lot of those people around me that say they're going to do something and then switch up the next day, the next week, whatever, and then they don't do it. Um, and it's, those are the most annoying fucking people ever. Like, I love them, but like doing that, the people that do that, it's so annoying. Like, hey, I'm going to do this thing, especially when it involves you. When they say they're going to do something and then they don't do it. You know those people. And I do it as well. I'm not like... Uh, Almighty, like I said, like I said before, like I'm not above it. I do these things. I say things I'm gonna do, and then I don't do them. But I try to keep it as minimal as possible. And my goal is to obviously say I'm gonna do something and do it every single time. That's how you become the most self-confident person. Because when you say you're gonna do something, and I preach this message for a while, I want to be the person. And I think everybody should be the person when they say they're going to do something, they do it because then your word has substance. Like you say you're going to do something, you fucking do it. So that's the premise. Now I'm going to cook some eggs. I'm going to cook some steak. And let me know what you guys think. If that's controversial, I was just talking about like the friends, family, and stuff like that. Saying no to that, extremely hard. But sometimes it's necessary. I've just noticed recently, completely throws me off the tracks. And that's why I like the videos, like I'm not waking up at 5 a.m. It's like, oh fuck, I did a bunch of dumb shit and I ate a bunch of candy on Halloween. I'm like, why? I don't even remember what it tasted like. It's not beneficial at all. I could have had a steak or something good for me. But it put me like a couple days behind and uh, yeah, dumb. 
dumb, dumb, dumb stuff. Don't come at me in the fucking comments saying I'm some piece of shit who doesn't like hanging out with his family and his girlfriend and stuff. Like I said, I fucking love them. But I'm just saying, like, this is a point I'm trying to... Ah, oh, damn it. There's a point I'm trying to make, all right? You guys don't understand it. Then <laughs> rewatch it. Get my engagement up. <laughs> because it's a life lesson that I wish I would have learned a while ago because I'm still learning it. Like, I'm not, like perfect or anything in it like this is something I'm working on like I can't it's so hard to say no to things like especially when you have a lot of opportunities it's super hard to say no to things like that all right that's the message it's not that I don't like my family or hanging out with my friends or my girlfriend I love it and I love them I'm just saying it's hard not to and, and do the things that you want to actually do, right? Because in my opinion, in my thought process, the way I think like this, the reason I think like this is because long term, what do I want to do? I want to spend even more time with them. I want to spend all my time with them and actually have like live the good life. Like I don't want to go to fucking Applebee's. I want to go to like a, a bougie steakhouse and buy my family all dinner. Right? That's what I want to do long term. I don't want to fucking go to Applebee's and, and get the appetizers, half price appetizers. I don't want to do that shit. I want to go to a nice steakhouse five years down the road. Whether Who cares how long it takes? I want to go there and I want to buy my whole family, tip the waiter a grand, do all that shit. And that's the thought process that I have going into, I mean, obviously these next couple years. That's going to get me there, right? Sacrificing the short term because, yeah, you guys get it. I'm not going to repeat myself too much. All right, breakfast is served. Boom. Got a steak, four eggs, one little baby avocado, and uh, yeah, that's it. Fair life. I'm going to have some raspberries as well, just kind of more carbs, um, get some fruit in, and then probably an apple as well, so... Decent sized breakfast. This steak is, I guess, decent size. Um, pretty ideal breakfast, though. What I usually have, what gets me hyped and ready for the day, and I'm not gonna to say I'm gonna eat it down. This is very painful. I'm eating breakfast. Usually, I watch YouTube. I can't watch YouTube. My phone won't let me, so. Looks like I'm gonna be reading while I eat breakfast. This is a feeling, it's a weird feeling like when you're craving dopamine, like you when you feel like you're missing something. But I need to get rid of it. Like it's such, it's literally an addiction. Like it's so bad. Like I wanna go on my phone and I wanna watch YouTube while I eat. Like that's what I do. That's what most people do. I don't know, they watch TV while they eat or do something while they eat. Or go on your phone while you eat, but I, I don't have anything on my phone. Like, there's literally nothing on my phone to go on. So, I can either go eat in peace, which I also don't want to do because I don't want to get addicted to eating. And I get addicted to reading. So, I should probably just read. Alright, meal number two, lunch. It's about 2.47 right now. You wish you could be eating this right now. Raspberry dark chocolate protein pancakes. Oh my gosh. And then I got Fairlife and then organic maple syrup. Just gonna smother it. But the raspberries, I was like, I was like, I had these protein pancakes. They were dark chocolate. I think it's got like 60 grams of protein, so it's it's got a lot of protein. Even probably more than 60 grams of protein, but look at that. Look at that. I don't know why I don't have this. It's probably because it's pretty high calories, but like the you can see the raspberries in there. I was like, oh, let me add raspberries to this. This would be good. And so I did. And it was the best decision of my life. I can't eat often like this, but holy shit, this is so good.
This will be my cheat meal. Every once in a while I'll have a cheat meal. This isn't even a cheat meal right now. I wasn't even thinking of having a cheat meal. But I was at the grocery store with Ethan yesterday. And he got protein pancakes. So I was like, shit, I want protein pancakes. And so I got them. And now look at me. I put raspberries in them. And they're actually, I highly recommend this. Dark chocolate protein pancakes with raspberries. And organic maple syrup is ideal. I'm not even good at making pancakes. Like these are a little bit burnt, but shit, that's so good. Wash it down with a nice jug of fair life. And yeah. Really weird lunch, not my typical lunch. Typically I'm having a fat steak, but now we got fan pa fat pancakes. I just keep eating and eating and eating. Meal three, some salmon. That's a lot of salmon. And we got like a little bit, like three quarters of a cup of rice, and then I'm gonna drink that Fairlife chug. I don't think I'll drink the whole Fairlife chug, but yeah, I've been eating a lot today. Um, up my calories quite a bit, so this stuff is gonna be good. I had salmon yesterday, but I look in the fridge. What's in the fridge? Fuck it, I'll show you guys. Eggs, milk, a ground lamb that's expired, but I'm still gonna eat it. And then down there is a, that's a steak. So that's like a, it's a, I would've ate the steak, but the steak is called a minute steak. And these things with the minute steaks is they're minute steaks, whatever you wanna call them. Um, they're tenderized and I don't like tenderized stuff. I mean, it's just like a flat sheet of, my, like, uh, of meat. I don't even know what they use it for, but it doesn't taste very good. It's not a good tender steak, even though they tenderized it. I, I don't think it makes it tender. So it's a preference. Some people might like it, but I only have them when I have to. I have them with like a breakfast, like eggs, steak and eggs, a minute steak, steak, a minute steak, a cube steak, those are good. Um, that's my recommendations for steak and eggs. But if you want like just a steak itself, you're gonna want a ribeye, you're gonna want a New York strip, you're gonna want a sirloin. Sirloin is just the go-to because it's so lean. You know, I gotta get away from the fats and stuff. It's just making my calories go way up. I'm gonna hit 200 pounds if I keep eating like this. So I, uh, I have, I do have some more pancake mix. So we'll see if I, I cave and eat the rest of that, but yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna reserve that hopefully for my birthday, or I'll just buy another box for my birthday because I turned 20 in six days, which is insane. So I'm gonna eat this. I'm gonna chill. I'm gonna hopefully finish my book. I said I was gonna finish the book by the end of the week. I definitely will. I'll finish it within a couple days. So yeah, that's where I'm at. Okay, I do not promote the use of drugs or the use of, I think you should be as natural and as close to nature as possible. But there comes a time when you get sick, you get a disease, you get something and you need something external. And I show you guys like the full life around and I'm not like a, like a perfect human being. Like I obviously preach these things and I think you should do them. But there's this little thing I like to call NyQuil and when I get sick, and when I feel I'm going to get sick, um, I'm not trying to get sick for very long. Like, I don't want to go through the natural healing process of getting sick and laying in bed all day. Like, I don't want to do that. I got stuff to do. I got a workout to hit. Um, I got work to get done. Um, these things aren't going to happen by themselves. And I'm not going to lay in bed and do that stuff. So I'm going to do everything my ability to 
obviously combat that, which for me, NyQuil is the thing. It knocks me out, it gets me good sleep. The thing you need when you're sick is you need sleep. This knocks me out. It also has the sore throat stuff as well, which I can feel my throat like kind of swelling up right now. But um, the sore throat, the like, I don't know what it all has. I mean, headaches, fevers, sore throat, minor headache, minor aches and pains. It just runny nose, sneezing, cough, all that stuff. But yeah, I'm not advising this. I'm just showing you guys exactly what I do because I don't want to fucking lie. I don't want to be like, oh, I'm immune to being sick. When I get sick, this is what I'm doing. I'm not advising this, but shit, it works. Like you guys, it fucking works. Like I'm gonna get knocked out. I'm gonna sleep amazing. And then I'm gonna wake up and not from this stuff. I'm not saying this stuff is the stuff that helps. Like it definitely helps. Like I'm, I'm also taking, you know, fish oil, which some people think is a scam. Which rightfully, like, I mean, you can think it's a scam, but it's, I don't know, it works for me. Magnesium. Magnesium is good. D3. Vitamin D3. One of those. And then, obviously, vitamin C. Vitamin C is the, the big one. Um, that's the immune system vitamin. And, yeah, this is, like, I mean... Really all you need, and then you basically will wash it down with some NyQuil. <sighs> yeah, that's good. But, yeah, I'll show you guys everything, so that's me. Avoiding being sick. I already feel better. I'm going to get knocked out pretty soon, so I'm going to end this video, but... This was day 237. I ate too much. I'm, I hopped on the scale. I'm 198 right now. So, not bad. I'm, 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 I want to weigh more. I want to be like 200 pounds, but I also want to be 200 pounds and lean. I don't want to be 200 pounds and like fluffy. Right? That, that makes no sense. I was at one point 215 pounds, believe it or not. That was my senior year in fall. So two years ago at this time, I was 215 pounds, which is insane. And right now, I'm 195 pounds, or like I said, 198. But like if I poop and I don't have any uh, food in my belly, realistically, I'm like 191, 190, whatever, around there, fluctuates. I'm going to go to bed. I'll catch you guys in the morning. Peace.